welcome to the part two of Makeup 101 with me today for this week's video because we're looking at something so up close and so detailed like your eye. I thought it would be best if we did this one via diagrams rather than going through looking at me on a screen or trying to determine this on a model. I think this one's really something that you want to have a great look at as well as being able to refer to something on a screen that isn't necessarily a natural face but more of a drawing which helps to identify things a little bit more easily. So what I want you to do before we get started is grab yourself a mirror um, and your phone again, same as last time. So if you want to uh, go to the bathroom with your phone, um, you're more than welcome to, or if you prefer, you can just take a photo um, of your eye so that you don't need the mirror. But what you need to do is when you're either looking in the mirror or taking the photo is make sure you're in good lighting and that you also don't pull your eyebrows up, don't squint, don't, you know, kind of move your face around it anyway. It should be like a mugshot just of your eye so that you can get a natural uh, view and a natural version of your eye rather than something that's been altered by lifting your brow or something like that. So that's step number one. Step number two essentially becomes a process of elimination. So what I'm going to do is ask you a series of questions and you need to look at your eye and determine whether or not that suits you. If it does suit you, then that's your eye shape determined. If it doesn't suit you, then you need to continue on through the questions. So there's part one, which is what we're going to do now, and there's part two, which will be further on in the video. Uh, but hang off for part two, because there might be something that goes with your eye shape that you've determined in part one that will still alter the way that you do your eye makeup and do your eyeliner and stuff like that. So it's all about making sure you know the full uh, spectrum of what your eye shape is and what you can and can't do. So that way, when you look at something online or you look at a photo, you can alter it to make it suit your own eye shape. Let the elimination game begin. What the very first question is that I'm going to ask you is whether or not when looking at your eye, either in the mirror or on your photo, whether or not you can see a crease. So you'll see in the diagram here, the little arrow that's pointing to the black line above the eyelashes, but below the brows, that is a crease line. So what a crease line is, is where your skin folds into the back of your eye socket around your eye, and then it also comes back out towards uh, your brow. So if you have a crease line, stay on the video. If not, you're already done because we have determined that you have a monolid eye shape, which sometimes um, a lot of people call, call an Asian eye shape because it's just one lid. So that's what monolid means. It means one lid. So you have one straight lid from your brow directly to your lash line, which means that you don't have to worry about any crease colors or anything like that. So if that's you, you can uh, hang off now on determining your eye shape and just skip through to part two of the video. For everybody else that isn't a monolid, you want to have a look at your eye. And if you can have a look at the point of your inner eye and the point of your outer eye, if you were to draw a line from the inside to the outside, would that line point up, be straight or point down? So if your line points up, you have a dough-shaped eye, like you can see in the diagram. If your line is straight, you have an almond-shaped eye or thereabouts. We're still not determined that one just yet, but you, you sit in that realm. And then the line pointing down means you have a downturned eye, which is what I have. It's, some people call it a droopy eye. Some people call it a like puppy dog eyes. Other people might call it a, a downturned eye, depending on what your terminology is. Totally fine, pick whichever name you like the best, and that is you. For everyone else that had their line fall through the center, what I want you to do next is take a look at the crease of your eyelid. So if you can see the actual fold in your skin, then I want you to stay on the video. If you can't and your skin kind of covers where it actually creases and you have to kind of open your eye a little bit to see where the fold actually lies, then that means that you most likely are a hooded eye. You can still be a doe or a downturned eye if you're hooded, uh, but generally speaking, the hood is what we determine uh, to be the most crucial part of your makeup. So stick in with the hooded category when you're looking at your eye makeups later on. So for everyone else that's left over, we have two eye shapes that you could possibly be after this. What I want you to do is have a look at whether or not you can see the white of your eyes above or below the iris. So the iris is the colored part in the middle of your eye that's in the diagram now. If you can see white above or below your iris, 
then you most likely have a round eye, which means that your eye is a little bit taller than the general ratio and it's a little bit shorter. So you get more of a rounded effect. Often in round eyes, you'll be able to see the outside of your eye ball kind of like as it curves back into your eye. Um, some people can see that, some people can't, but a lot of people can. But if you can see the white above or below, then you sit in the round eye shape category. If none of these things apply to you, then you are an almond shaped eye, which makes it nice and easy for you. You don't have to try and work out what you are because everyone else has already jumped off and you're what's left over. So if you're an almond shaped eye, the good thing about it is that this is technically in the makeup world, the most ideal eye shape. So as trends change over time, like the 1920s, everyone wanted a droopy eye um, or a downturned eye. In the uh, 40s, everybody wanted an almond eye again. But most recently, with the rise of the Kardashian culture and that kind of face shape um, becoming more and more popular, people want a doe-shaped eye. Some people call a doe-shaped eye jasmine eye as well um, because of Princess Jasmine from Aladdin. Um, so you are looking at more of that Arabian kind of style eye shape. So it lifts up on the outer edges and it's lower on the insides. So if you are an almond shaped eye, getting back to my point, um, you can generally do most eye makeups, which is really great. But if you want to learn how to accentuate a certain part of your eye or you want to learn how to lift or drop your eye or make it more round or straighter or anything like that, stay on the video because you'll be able to pick and choose what parts of the eye makeup you want to do to change your eye shape, which is really great. So now we are up to part two. So part two is all about positioning. So this determines how your eyes sit on your face. A lot of people say, oh, I have big eyes or I have small eyes or, you know, my eyes are too close together or too far apart, that sort of stuff. That's what we're talking about when you're looking at positioning. So when you're looking at the very first thing, to help you determine the positioning of your eye, I want you to look at the gap that's between the two inner corners of your eyes. Is that gap about the same length as your eyes? Is it smaller or is it longer? So if that gap is smaller, your chances are you'll have a closed set eye, which means your eyes are just a little bit closer together than the normal ratios. Or if it's larger, that gap is larger than the width of your eyes, then you will have a wide set eye. And this means it's just slightly wider apart than your ratios that you generally see. So a close set eye is a little bit closer together than the width of your eye. And a wide set eye is an eye that is slightly further apart than the width and the length of your eye shape. The next one that I want you to have a look at is how tucked in your eye is behind your brows or how far forward your eyes are from your brows. So... Someone who um, is ideally, you know, looking at, say, a deep set eyelid. For example, you have deep set protruding. Uh, a deep set eye is someone who has their eyes that tuck a bit further back, and it means that their eyes are quite shadowed. Even in natural light, um, their eyes are shadowed by their brows or by their cheekbones. It's kind of like they sit further back in the hollow of their eye sockets. And someone who has a protruding eye is someone who has their eyes that sit further forward. Um, so if you're looking at people like Amanda Seyfried, she has a protruding eye. Um, so someone that has the eyes that sit slightly further forward in the face. So you don't really have much difference in, uh, shape between their brow and their eye. If anything, their eye comes out further than their eyebrow, maybe just slightly. So that is your protruding or your deep set eye. The very last one that I want you to take a look at is whether or not your eyes and your mouth and your nose are kind of in proportion. So if you're looking at your eyes compared to your mouth and nose, are they narrower than the, like when you smile, does your smile come out wider than your eyes? Um, if it does, chances are you have small eyes. If it doesn't by quite a lot and you have a smaller mouth and a smaller nose, then chances are you have larger eyes. So if you have larger eyes, you can do a lot with your eye makeup. You can wear a lot of dark colors. Um, you can really kind of play up the shadows and stuff like that. If you have smaller eyes, you're the lucky guys that can use all the light shimmery colors, all the highlighters, everything like that to your heart's content because it's only going to make your eyes look bigger and better. Um, so if you guys sit through any of these categories, what I generally look at is picking one of the shapes from part one and then picking 
If you lie in, you may not lie in any of the positioning, which is fine too. So if not, you don't have to worry about any of the positioning tricks. You only have to worry about the eye shape uh, rules. You don't have to worry about anything to do with the positioning. But if you just lie in your eye shapes first and don't take a look at the positioning, you may be doing your eyes a bit of a disservice when it comes to eye makeup. So I hope that this has helped everybody uh, try and determine how their eye shape sits and how it kind of aligns with the different rules of makeup. What we have following this video is a link below to download my cardinal rules for eye makeup determined by your eye shape and your eye positioning. So what you can do in there is you can have a look at your shapes, really have a look, think, okay, well, if I'm a monolid, I'm going to do this. And you can kind of see my top tips and tricks for each of them. As we go on through this series, you'll actually get a demonstration of each different eye shape live um, through a video that you'll be able to see all the different bits and pieces and how I hold the brushes and all that sort of stuff. But right now, if you just want to have a bit of a play around, now that you know what your eye shape and your eye positioning is, you can really kind of look at that, that list of rules and, and kind of think of them as, as tips to go forward while we're still working through. So now you can apply your face shape and your eye shape rules. And this will essentially allow you now to jump on Google and say how to do a round smoky eye or a smoky eye for round eyes. Um, or how to do eyeliner for a dough shaped eye. Or um, how to make my eyes look bigger if you have small eyes or how to make my eyes look smaller if you have large eyes. So depending on what it is that you want to pick now, you can think, okay, well that's my eye shape. I at least have something to go forward with. And from here, I can really work out exactly what I want to do. I hope that this has been really good and really helpful for you. If you need anything at all, feel free to send me a DM on Instagram. So at livesley underscore makeup and lashes, or you can jump on my website and you can subscribe to all the updates that are coming through, pop a comment on the video, whichever works for you. And then from there, we can get everything all sorted and I can answer as many questions as possible. I hope you have a great day, guys. Enjoy. Bye.